Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use Guitar Pro, which is one of my most favorite computer programs for learning music. And I'm gonna show you how it can make learning songs a lot easier. So let's dive into that right now. Okay, so just so you know, I am not getting paid by Guitar Pro or endorsed or anything. This is just a program that I really like to use and I encourage my students to get it too because it's very handy as you're gonna see when we jump onto the computer in just a second. But Guitar Pro is one of the coolest programs that we can use to learn guitar because it's a tool that we have today that people didn't have when they were learning guitar years ago. I didn't even have anything like this when I was growing up. I was like, I was getting tabs off the internet but Guitar Pro is so much more powerful. So let's dive in and show you how it works and how you can use it to make learning songs easier. Okay guys, so here we are. This is the website for Guitar Pro. If you don't have this, you can download a free trial of it or you can buy it. I think it's like 60 bucks. Like I said, this is not endorsed. I'm not getting anything from them, but this is such a powerful tool. So if you go to guitar-pro, like it says up here at the top, there you can download the actual program and use it. But then what you have to do is you have to find songs that are in the format that Guitar Pro uses. And here's how you do that. If you go to ultimate-guitar.com, which everybody knows, right? It's a very handy site. Lots of cool stuff happening here. You can just use the search bar here to search for anything or you can come down here and they have right here in the middle, they have a type of file here. So you'll see chords, official, tab, ukulele, guitar pro, and I'm gonna click on that because right here, these are songs that have guitar pro files associated with them. So for example, I could click on Nothing Else Matters by Metallica and it'll take me to this page and then you're gonna see guitar pro's own uh, thing pop up there to scroll down to the bottom and then you're gonna see this little button that says download guitar pro tab you click on that and then it'll bring it up into your downloads folder if you're using a Mac like me or wherever you save download files and then you've got this and you can open it up in guitar pro okay so now that we're in guitar pro what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how this works because you're going to need a little bit of knowledge about music notation and how that all works. But even if you don't understand that, this is still something really, really handy because apart from just being like tab notation that has the notes of what, you know, what fret you're playing on the string, this has the rhythmic notation. And the coolest thing about it is this will play things back as MIDI audio. Here's what I mean by it'll play back the music as a MIDI audio file. So I'm going to put my cursor here on the first note of the song and then I'm going to hit the play button or you can hit the space bar. That's usually what I do. It's a lot easier. <laughs> So this is just the tab that I made for the Let It Be solo, and that is just the computer reading the data and playing back the notes as you would hear it. Now, it's not the greatest sounding thing, but it at least gives you an idea of what the song is supposed to sound like. Now, the cool thing is, though, as you have an understanding of music notation and rhythmic notation and how that all works together, this becomes a whole lot more powerful for you. But let me show you how I use this with students in their lessons and how they can use it at home as well to make learning songs a lot easier. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use this Let It Be solo, because I've done this with a lot of students for this song, where what we do is we usually break up this song into different phrases. And so let's say that I've got a student who is working on this phrase right here. Let's see. Yeah. 
Yeah, let's do that whole thing. I think I would normally, if I'm working with a student, we'd break that up into two or three different phrases. But for the purpose of this, what I'm going to do is I just clicked and dragged to highlight that section of the song. Now, here's the cool thing. Up here at the top, you see where this 100% uh, is faded out? This is your relative speed. So it's automatically sent to play at 100% normal speed. So if you go download something like Nothing Else Matters here, which let me get me out of the way here, where I could play this... And hopefully whoever created this paid attention to what the correct tempo of the song is. But then here's the cool thing. Once you have that, whatever section you're going to work on in the song, come up here and click on that. And you'll see now it's highlighted and it's blue. And now there's a drop down menu next to it. Now, a lot of times what I'll do with students in class is we will sit down and we'll start at like 50% speed and we'll repeat that. So I'm going to click on the loop right here too, so that this is going to loop just this section of the song. And now I've got it set to 50% speed and it's just going to loop. So now I'm going to hit play. So it's just going to keep repeating it at 50% of the 100% speed. And that makes it a lot easier to hear what it is that you are supposed to be playing. And then you can play along with it. So what I'll do is I'll set this for students and we'll play along with it and just loop it and loop it and loop it. And that way they can get it nice and smooth and nice and accurate. And then we go over here. Geez, I turned it off and we bump it up. Now, a lot of times, I talked about this in another video, I will bump up the speed before a student feels ready. As soon as they're doing it a little bit smooth and they're getting pretty good at it, I speed it up before they think that they're ready for it. And a lot of times I try to be sneaky so that they don't see me do it, right? I'm gonna show you in a few minutes how you can do that on your own to trick yourself into playing faster. And so now I've got it set at 60% speed. And so now when I hit my space bar, now I'm at 60% speed. And it's just going to continue to repeat. So you can repeat that and repeat that and repeat that and work on getting it faster and faster. This is 70%. And then when you're comfortable or nearly comfortable with 70%, you go to 80%. And then you go up to 90%. And then you finally get up to the full 100. Now you'll notice, I didn't do it earlier, but you can go down to as low as 25% speed. This is really handy if you're working on something that's really, really fast. Right, for this it's not really necessary because this isn't super fast but here's the coolest thing and this is what i have students do when they're practicing this at home is i have them work with the speed trainer so if you come over to the drop down menu that is where the speed is where you can select 50 60 whatever percent right here it says 70 to 100 percent and it's going to go up 10 percent speed every one time that it repeats now that, it, I guess it depends on how good you're doing at it. Usually what I do is I come down to custom values here. And here we can do a progressive speed. So check this out. I can start wherever I want. I can start at like 40% speed. And I can have it go up 1% every two times that it repeats. So it'll start at 40% and it'll go through that twice. And then the next time we'll go up to 41% and twice and then 42% 
and repeat that twice. And so, but for the sake of today, let's do this. Let's go to the 70% that we had before. And I just want this at 100, not 126. And I want this to go up 2% every time. So check this out. Um, 2% is a lot more manageable than jumping 10%, right? So I'm going to click OK. And now when you do this, this is automatically going to increase the speed for you if you don't have a teacher right there who is speeding it up without telling you and trying to trick you into playing faster. So now when I hit play, this is 70% speed right here. Now this is 72, and you'll see at the top here it changed to 72. And now it's at 74. And so if we let that go every single time it repeats, it'll go up 2% every time until it reaches 100%, and then it'll just repeat at 100%. So this is something that I use with my students all the time to help them learn difficult parts of songs. So not only can you just listen to the song and hear how it is, you can slow the song down, you can isolate individual parts of the song. And one of the cool things you'll see it here on this Metallica one, there's all these different tracks down here in the bottom. There's the vocal track, there's the guitar one, guitar two, three, four, five, but you also have the bass, you have the drums, which I don't know why they have tab uh, activated for the drums. That's ridiculous. Why would you have tab for drums? Anyway, and then, you know, you'll see stuff for piano or strings or different stuff like that. Here's an Arctic Monkey song I'm working on with students that we have the guitar, the bass, the drum parts, all this fun stuff going on. And so this tool of using Guitar Pro of going and finding Guitar Pro files, like you can right here on ultimateguitar.com. This makes life easier there. I'm sure that there's other places that you can get these too. I know that Guitar Pro has their songbook where you can get official ones. The only problem with those I find is sometimes they're wrong and they're locked so they can't be edited. So even when I get stuff off of uh, Ultimate Guitar, I know a lot of times it's not going to be 100% correct. And so I usually have to go through and correct things in it. But it gets me close enough. And then when I'm working with students, we can play along with it. We can work on it at different speeds. And it simplifies everything. So I hope that was really, really handy for you. So go download it, get the free trial, try it out. If you buy it, cool. It doesn't help me out at all. I don't have a deal with them at all. This is just a cool program. So there you go, guys. That is how you use Guitar Pro and how it can help you make learning songs a lot easier. I hope that that was clear. If you still have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'll get down there and help you out in the comments. But if you like this and you want more stuff like this, then I have a gift for you at my website. If you go to simpleguitar.com slash top 10, there I have a guide for you called the top 10 things to learn on guitar first. And it's 10 things I teach beginners all the time to get them playing more musical, real music stuff rather than stuff like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star nursery rhymes. And it's totally free for you. It's 17 pages of stuff going over all 10 things. And it's my way of saying thank you for you being here today and watching this video. So go to simpleguitar.com slash top 10, download that guide for free, Thanks for watching today. Thanks for subscribing and liking and commenting and all that fun stuff. Have an awesome day and have fun with Guitar Pro, and I will catch you in the next video.